questions. Uh, we have Danielle Allen on our Zoom tonight. She's a candidate for governor. Danielle. Thank you so much, Kathy. Great to see you and good evening, Brain Tree Dems. Congratulations. I'm Danielle Allen. I'm running to be our next governor. My students call me Prof Danielle, and I've been called all kinds of things, some of them good, Dean and Director, Chairman of the Board. But my favorite title is Mom, and next best after that is just plain Danielle. I'm a seasoned nonprofit leader, democracy advocate, national leader on pandemic response. I've traded in my day job to answer a call to service. This is not a time for business as usual. It's a time for a fresh perspective. It's a time for bold and decisive action, and I am ready. Life hasn't been business as usual for me since 2009. That year, I lost my younger cousin, Michael. Michael and I grew up together. He was probably the first baby I ever held when he was born in 1979. I was a lonely kid being bullied on the school playground that year, and then my aunt delivered a ready-made new best friend. And he was a bright kid with lively mind, full of curiosity and gorgeous smile, he wanted to travel the world and learn French. Instead of that, in 1995, in Southern California, he was arrested on a first arrest for an attempted carjacking. This was a terrible thing to have done, but it was also the time in California where punishment was at its most intense. And on that first arrest, Michael got a sentence of 12 years and eight months. And from the age of 15, he served 12. When he got out, I was what I always call cousin on duty, trying to help put the pieces back together, with housing and school and jobs. And Michael had, had two years out at the point in 2009 when he was shot and killed by somebody he met while he was in prison. That was a life turning point moment for me. I had a deep sense of personal failure about Michael's death, but I also started beating my head against the question, why are we so bad at helping so many young people make a transition to a healthy adulthood? And if we look around at the opioid epidemic, we know it's young people of all backgrounds and especially young men of color. And I started putting every tool at my disposal to work, working with young people and for young people, trying to put the world to rights for young people. I drove change through complex bureaucracies, leading a $60 million division at the University of Chicago, leading a $6 billion foundation, building a civic education provider from startup here in Massachusetts, and through issue advocacy for cannabis legalization, democracy reform, civic education reform. And through it all, the thing that's always made a difference, brought me light and hope in a dark time, has been being a part of a big team, a team of guts and grit and heart and hustle. And I know since you're all here tonight, you are part of that kind of big team, ready to work on behalf of Massachusetts. And for the pandemic as well, that kind of team made the difference for me. I had a huge sense of shock when it first hit and how different impacts were for different communities and how slow people with power and authority were to see that and respond appropriately. I put out a call and I was blessed by the response, formed a rapid response team with experts and practitioners, mayors from around the country and community advocates. In April 2020, we put together the first national policy roadmap advocating for a real ramp up of public investment in testing and contact tracing. We got policy into federal legislation and into a Biden-Harris executive order. But COVID didn't just teach us that we need more testing. COVID drove home that we live or die by our democracy. For all of our hardest problems from the pandemic to climate crisis, to inequality, to racial injustice, we have to have a healthier, stronger democracy if we're gonna address any of them. And that work starts right here at home. We need a big team of, of guts and grit to forge a path out of this dark, hard time. And I believe the place we all deserve to get is to a green and healthy next generation democracy. But how do we get there? We've gotta commit. We've gotta to commit to a roof over every head. We do have a housing crisis across the Commonwealth. We've got to commit to electrifying our commuter rail system and building a Commonwealth wide rail system so we can drive a transition to a 100% renewable energy economy. We've got to commit to decriminalizing addiction, making sure people get help, not handcuffs. And we've got to commit to a democracy we can count on. None of this can happen though, unless we make it happen. And I believe it's time for us to link arms as one Commonwealth to reimagine the possible and get it done together. So I'm Danielle Allen. I am asking for your support in our upcoming convention. I would be honored to have you with me so that we can get this important work done together. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, so as you guys can see in your, you know, my Zoom tile there, uh, I'm Sonia Cheng Diaz. And for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm a mom. I am a former public school teacher and a Massachusetts first Latina and first Asian American state senator. And I'm running for governor for pretty simple reasons. 
every day in Massachusetts, it is getting harder and harder for families to live here, right? Housing costs are going through the roof. We've got some of the worst traffic congestion in the nation and the fastest growing student debt load. Uh, healthcare costs, childcare costs are getting more and more expensive. And you know, hanging over it all, we've got the consequences of climate change that are just barreling down on us. And the truth is, leaders on Beacon Hill have been telling working families to wait for too damn long for meaningful change on these problems. Uh, the fire that I bring to this race comes from my past. Uh, my dad was an immigrant uh, who came to the United States from Costa Rica with 50 bucks in his pocket. Uh, but with the help of teachers and lunch ladies and librarians, he made it not only to college, but he made it to space and became NASA's first Latino astronaut. My mom is a social worker and she's a woman of faith. And she spent her career helping women and children who struggle on the margins of society. And each of them in their own way taught me about our country's incredible promise and incredible opportunities. And also how the only way that we're gonna deliver on those things is if we raise our voices and take action together and we fight for our best values. And those lessons have stayed with me my entire life. Working as a public school teacher uh, in one of the poorest and least funded school districts in Massachusetts, Lynn. Uh, every day uh, in Lynn, I came face to face with the way that the gap between have and have not communities uh, and Beacon Hill's willful inattention to that gap narrowed the life choices for my kids. And the fire also comes from what I've witnessed over my past 13 years as a state senator, fighting like hell uh, alongside some of you for bold transformational change. Uh, I have seen firsthand in that work that we've still got too many people in government who are more concerned with holding on to power rather than doing something with it. And that is why it is getting so hard to live and work and raise a family in our state. You know, it's why we now find ourselves in the situation where we've got students who work for years to earn their degree, but then they get crushed under student debt. And we've got, uh, you know, moms and dads who look at our kids and we wonder whether they're gonna inherit a planet that will sustain them. We've got uh, black and brown kids and their parents who worry that their next encounter with the police could be their last. And we've got you know, firefighters and municipal workers who cannot afford to live in the communities that they serve. I am running to change that because over the past 13 years, we've also shown that we can win big. You know, things like $1.5 billion with a B in progressive education funding for our schools, criminal justice reform, police accountability, LGBTQ rights, We've shown with these wins that we don't have to accept the world as it is presented to us. I've seen real systemic change happen before in our Commonwealth, and that is how I know that we can provide a debt-free quality education to every one of our kids from birth into adulthood. We can pass a Green New Deal, win the fight against climate change, create tens of thousands of good paying jobs at the same time. And we can close the racial wealth divide, rebuild the middle class, make it so that our kids' economic fortunes look better and not worse than their parents. We have already shown that that future is possible. We just need to stand together. We gotta see each other's fights as our own. And we gotta elect a governor who doesn't just say the right words, but who's shown that she will take action on tough fights, even when it's not politically convenient in order to deliver that kind of change. So if that's a future that you wanna grab with both hands and one that is worth rolling up your sleeves and fighting for, I am asking you to join me in this race. Uh, we are organizing all across the state for caucuses. Um, no one is entitled uh, to this office and I'm not taking any voters for granted. Uh, I am personally reaching out to every single ward and town committee across this state um, in meetings just like this one, whether you know before caucuses or in a you know in the caucus itself. Um, and we are also working with volunteer leaders uh, across the state to recruit 
and support folks over, over the coming weeks um, and months um, heading into convention. So if you, uh, if you wanna join this, I will pop a link in the chat uh, for you to sign up, uh, but you can also just go to soniachangdiaz.com to do so. Um, I will just close with this and say, um, I did not get into this race because I thought it would be easy. Uh, and I didn't get into it because I saw a good career opportunity. I got into it because I have stood on the front lines with families across the state for my whole life. I know the urgency of this moment that we're living in, and I know the future that we can build together. So I thank you uh, for giving me a little slice of your, your, your mind and your heart tonight. I'm excited to build this future with you and partner with you on this growing campaign. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing to keep the, you know, the fires lit of local democracy. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Senator Chang Diaz. Uh, our next candidate is Attorney General Maura Healy, candidate for governor. Um, is uh, uh, Attorney, hi Attorney there. General here? Oh, there you are. Good. Uh, how are you? How is yours? Can you hear me? Yes, thank you very oh, much great. for joining oh, us you, tonight. Kathy. Many thanks to the Braintree Dems for the work that you do day in and day out as volunteers, as delegates, as community leaders. Thank you so much. I am here tonight to ask for your support. I'm excited to be running for governor um, and hope to be able to earn your support at the caucus and, and in the days ahead. I've known many of you, but I'd like to take the opportunity to reintroduce myself uh, to you um, and maybe tell you some things you don't know. I was raised by a single mom on an old uh, farmhouse in, in Seacoast, New Hampshire. And my mom looked after the, the five of us kids. She put herself back to work. She was a school nurse for many, many years. And she taught us the value of strength and sacrifice and, and hard work and teamwork. Um, I waitressed my way through high school and college working at the Hampton Beach uh, casino ballroom. I went to uh, Harvard and was able to play some basketball there and that led me to a brief career professionally overseas uh, as a point guard. Um, I came back though and pursued what was my passion which was to go to law school and that landed me in the Attorney General's office as head of civil rights um, and then led me ultimately to run for Attorney General. But you know back from my days when I led the Civil Rights Division, I mean I led the case there where we took on the Defense of Marriage Act. We challenged some of the big banks who we engaged in terribly predatory practices that really hurt, particularly our black and brown communities. I decided to run for office because I wanted to make uh, a difference. And I, and I thought that was an office where you could make a difference. And I promised you then that my team and I would be the people's lawyer. We wouldn't shy away from tough problems. We would be willing always to stand up to, to powerful interests and we would look out for people. That's why we took on Purdue Pharma and the Sacklers for devastating so many families and communities with the opioid crisis they created. We stood up to ExxonMobil for lying about climate change. We recovered hundreds of millions of dollars for homeowners and student borrowers who were victimized by predatory lenders. We expanded access to reproductive health and we put equity at the center of all of our work. Most of all, we made that office be about you, centering it around people, protecting workers, tenants, consumers, immigrants, uh, that has been the focus of the work. I don't wanna change that formula. I wanna bring the same approach to the governor's office. You know, Massachusetts has some of the best schools and hospitals and innovative companies in the world, but too many families are being left behind and are not benefiting from that. It's a great place to live. It's the best state in the country, uh, if you can afford it. And I hope as we emerge from this pandemic, we recognize and seize the opportunity to do things differently. As governor, I want to tackle the high cost of living. I want to invest in housing and transit. I want to be the most aggressive governor when it comes to addressing the climate crisis. I want to expand our job training programs because with the economic growth happening right now and what should be happening going forward, everyone should be able to share in that prosperity with the right education, and with the right support. We need to make childcare more affordable for everyone. I can tell you, it really upsets me that so many women have left the workforce. Women's 
uh, participation in the workforce is the lowest that it's been since 1988. And part of that are the barriers created by an unworkable childcare system here in the state. We've got a lot of work to do. We've got a lot of work to do when it comes to addressing mental health. You know, I know that most every family has experienced um, exacerbated mental health needs through this pandemic. And, you know, I want to be really clear, uh, mental health care is health care. And as governor, I am going to work to finally fix our behavioral health systems so that every child, every person has access to the care they need when they need it. And so these are some of the things that I think about um, and, and, and the things that I want to accomplish as governor. I can't tell you how fired up I am because I've seen what it what happens when people come together, when you can convene, when you can lead, when you can set a vision and what you can execute and how you can get things done. And as I say, Massachusetts is a fantastic place to live. We can be so much better. We can do so much more. And I think that by centering the work on people, by centering the work on equity, by harnessing the tremendous human capital, intellectual capital and innovation we have here in the state, we can do great things. So I hope you'll join me and the team in this campaign, I'd love to earn your support, support, and I'm really excited to be out here, and I thank you for your time here tonight. Well, we thank you very much for joining us tonight.